look like a 90s supermodel. Pick me. Guess what is trending on TikTok right now? Velcro rollers. But seriously though, if you go onto TikTok search and you type in hashtag Velcro rollers, you will be presented with a whole array of amazing Velcro roller videos and I am here for it. I am all for 90s hair, 90s makeup, 90s fashion, the 90s supermodel. Oh my God, it was such a good time for beauty. Today we're gonna to talk all about Velcro rollers. I'm going to do a demo on my own hair. I'm gonna show you a demo on a fine haired client. I'm gonna show you how to take them out without getting them caught in your hair. I'm gonna show you some different placement techniques that you can do. And I'm gonna help you live your best 90s supermodel Velcro roller hair life. Let's go. So what are Velcro rollers anyways? So Velcro rollers are plastic cylinders that have Velcro on one side. The Velcro sticks to your hair and allows it to stay in its position, you know, with out clips. Sometimes you do need clips, but they are intended to stick to the hair so that when you roll it all up, it's all there in the roller and you don't need to use like a million clips. Now I cannot stress enough that Velcro rollers are not intended to be for curling your hair. They're intended for lift, volume, and a little bit of bevel or movement in the hair. I have read a lot in different reviews and things like that, people saying, you know, why even bother using Velcro rollers? They don't do anything. They don't curl my hair. My curls don't last. That's because they're not supposed to curl your hair. They are not a curling tool. They really are a oomph volume infusion of lift tool. They are, they're not meant to create curls. And even if you use very small Velcro rollers and you heat them up, you take your hair out, you will get a bevel and you will get you know, movement more at the bottom of the hair, you're not going to get like a spiral or an overly curly look. That's not what they're for. The main thing that you have to remember when using any type of tool for hair, and it's something that I say a lot on this channel, is that hair is malleable when it's hot, it sets its shape when it is cool. If you want your hair to do something, you have to manipulate it when it's hot and leave it in that manipulated shape until it cools down, and then it will be set and will have less likely hood of dropping. So with Velcro rollers, because my hair, everyone thinks my hair is really full, but my hair is actually really, really fine. As you can see in this clip, when I just kind of let it be and I don't style it, if I want lift, if I want volume, if I want this really amazing shape in my hair, I have to infuse that shape when my hair is hot. So the way that I do that is I put my Velcro rollers in, when my hair is hot, I let my hair cool. I take the Velcro rollers out and I get all of this lift and all of this shape here at the top of my head and on the sides and everywhere because that root has set lifted. So when the root was hot, it was put in a lifted position. It's cooled down and now it is set and ready to be worn that way. So with that said, let's talk about placement. Placement is very important when it comes to rollers. So the first placement that I wanna to talk to you guys about is the mohawk placement. What you wanna do here is blow dry your entire head of hair and when you get to the very top section without a part line, blow dry your hair all backwards and put three Velcro rollers in one by one, spinning them behind you so that you're going towards the back of your head. So pay attention here to where the hair is before I spin it back. I am not lifting the hair up at 90 degrees and spinning it down, I am bringing the hair all the way forward and then spinning it back so that I get the Velcro rollers into a position that will optimize the volume. This is an easy peasy placement. Three Velcro rollers, you're already blow drying your hair, you pop them in, bring it forward, roll it back so it's sitting like on base, it's right up there, it's not you know tilted back. That's going to really optimize your volume and it's gonna give you a big bang for your buck. It's gonna give you a nice big result right at the top of your head super, super quickly. Now, if you have a little bit more time, then you can try this placement as well. This is a full head placement. It works better for longer hair, but I'm gonna show you on my hair anyway. Okay, so bear with me. I'm in my bathroom. There's no natural light and the lighting is a little bit hideous, but we will go with it anyway. So what I do here, I start with that mohawk section placement just like I did before. Then I do that fourth roller right behind the three so we get even more lift over there in the crown. Now when we get to the side I split it into two sections. Starting behind the ear I'm going to take that roller and I'm going to roll it down and clip it in place. Now right around my temples instead of rolling down I actually like rolling it vertically away from the face. When I release it you'll see what this does and again 
rolling it away from the face on that side. And then I just repeat the same thing on the other side, just rolling that temple section right away from the face and then those bottom sections away from the face as well. When I get to the back, I'm gonna use my dry bar ones because they're a little bit bigger. And I'm just going to put one nice big one in the center of my head, and then I'm going to split the bottom section into two, apply a roller there, apply a roller there, and then I just have a little bit of hair left at my nape, and I'm going to apply a little roller there. So as you can see, it looks like this now. The next thing I like to do is spray my hair with a light hold hairspray, making sure everything is nice and secure there. And then I take my blow dryer, I put it on a high heat but low speed setting. This is important. You don't wanna blow the hair all crazy, but you really wanna heat it up, right? Remember that hot hair is malleable. That is what we always say here. That's like my motto of life. So I'm just gonna heat it up equally amongst my entire head. When I find that everything is nice and warm, then I just turn off my blow dryer and I go live my life and typically go get dressed and touch up my makeup. Now what we wanna do is we just want to remove everything. As you can see, I get tons and tons of lift. If you look here at the front, when I remove the front roller, you will see that the hair kind of rolls away from the face. It doesn't give me a huge amount of volume, but gives me a really pretty kind of away from the face frame, which is very 90s supermodel and very very, very cute. Rough your hair up with your fingers. Don't collapse it with a brush. Just use your fingers to kind of decide where you wanna place it. Flip your head upside down, infuse more volume. And then when you have the placement that you love, you can spray a little more hairspray if you want, or you can go live your life. When I do this mohawk placement, what I typically do is every time I'm finished blow drying that specific section, I place my roller on that section and I'm good to go. So I will move on to the next wet section, blow dry it completely so it's totally dry. Since it's already hot, I roll my roller down and let it set piece by piece. Doing this on yourself can be tricky so that's why if you have a diffuser attachment it's a great other option you can blow dry your entire hair when your hair is totally dry then you can put your rollers in and then you can heat it up with a diffuser i find sometimes when i'm demoing hot rollers people get intimidated because they don't think that they can manipulate their hair wet put it in the roller and then blow dry the other wet section without touching the other rollers and i get that that's hard to do that's even hard to do on myself and I do this for a living. So if you want to get around that, just do your entire head, blow dry your whole head, whichever way you do, then put your rollers in, then just heat it up with, you know, a nice high heat setting, but low speed. So you don't blow the hair all around like crazy. And then you can wait 15 minutes or half an hour for it to cool down before you release it. The second issue that a lot of people have is getting them caught in the hair. So many people are messaging me and saying, I want to use hot rollers. I love how they look, but it rips out so much of my hair. It's not worth it. I get that. That is like a serious issue. There are some things that you can do so that you don't get your hot roller caught. So the first thing I want to show you is when you are doing your rollers, you want to make sure that the section you're rolling is the same width as the roller itself. You don't want to use too much width in the roller. If you do that, it's going to get all caught and all crazy. The next suggestion that I have for you is when you are rolling the hair, you want to take that section that's the same width as the roller, put it all the way to the end of the hair and roll carefully. Sometimes I see people taking the roller and wrapping the hair around the roller like they would around a curling wand. Although this will still give you the same effect, it can be harder to take it out then because it can really start to get really caught. It's very important that the rollers are placed in a way that's nice and neat and orderly. The second you start putting them in all crazy, it's going to be a lot harder to take them out. If you're rolling it all weird or if the sections are really big and you're cramming them into rollers, it's gonna start getting a lot harder to take them out. The next tip I have for that is don't squish your hair into the Velcro. There are certain hair types that are more likely to get caught in the Velcro. So when you are rolling your hair, don't push it so tight into the Velcro. Really let it lay just kind of gently on that roller when you roll it down and then secure it with a clip. That's going to be another way 
that it's not going to tangle up so much because it's not squished so deeply into that Velcro. And finally, if it is caught, say it is caught, one way to get it out that's going to help you is hold on to the base of your hair and roll the roller out of your hair. When we use Velcro rollers, for whatever reason, we seem to like to grab them and just yank up. And I'm even guilty for it. I do it too. I just kind of pull them up. And that's fine if you're not creating a lot of damage. But if you're noticing that you're getting a lot of hair coming out or that it's creating a lot of damage or say you have really you know, fine and thinning hair and you don't want to lose any more hair, hold on to the base of your roller. Don't squish it too much into the Velcro. Hold on to the base of your hair, should I say, and then roll that roller out gently. That's really gonna help you get it out without causing any damage to your hair. If you like this video, then you may find this one to be really helpful next. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.